from all the political parties, the three most important ones, I suppose, at the moment, is pretty electrifying as well. Um, we'll be talking more about the timeline of events over the next 72 hours or so, um, what's going to happen. But I suppose, Michal, um one of the big things are, are jobs. Who's going to get what jobs? Now, we won't know that probably until Saturday. But the positions that people are going to be getting, we've heard a little bit more about that today. And these are kind yeah. of new ministerial appointments. And, and there will be discussions later between the party leaders kind of presupposing that, that, that things do go in a certain direction tomorrow. So we kind of can see certain changes already now. The Department of Defence uh, becomes a senior role once again. Much criticism of that over the course of the last government. Uh, some TDs reckoning they lost their seats because of how defence issues were handled uh, and where general army barracks were based. And if you look too to the Gaeltuk, this is another kind of ongoing sore in Gaeltuk communities that there hasn't been a, a senior minister. What you have is junior ministers with their with the senior minister's role delegated to them exclusively for the Gaeltuk. So that looks like it's going to change as well. You'll have a senior Gaeltuk minister. A lot of talk too around the Department of Children. It wasn't said to be abolished. Mm -hmm. It will remain, it seems, but that there will be something added to it. And during the discussions on the programme for government, there were calls from some some people linked to the Green Party to have a standalone Department of Marine, given the huge resources, natural marine resources there are. But that looks like it's going to stay part of the Department of Agriculture. And then if you look at the the cabinet structure, the 15, obviously, uh, and then three super juniors, including the chief whip as one of them, plus two others. So each of the parties... Uh, if if they do get the green light tomorrow, we'll mm-hmm. have one of those super juniors, either the chief whip or one of the two super junior roles. And we're looking at sort of a breakdown of, is it six, six and three, something That's like that? That's just we, we expect, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the other question then is around the juniors. How many juniors would you have uh, when the teacher was talking to David McCullough the last night and 20 was mentioned he didn't deny it and he's saying it had gone up to 19 people think that there's a reduced number of juniors but of course they were reduced in 2011 and they have crept upwards since then so it looks like it will be 20 and then there's always the question on the day a teacher gets nominated will the juniors be announced today and people say oh they might oh they might and then in every mm-hmm. session they were never going to be announced because he will need something to assuage the huge levels of disappointment and mm-hmm. he might wait a few days for that but things are slightly different this time given that there's been such a long wait uh, and that no matter what way you look at it, about two thirds of both Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael aren't going to get any jobs. So there's going to be disappointment and that disappointment usually over time, for some at least, develops into rancour. So it might be just as well to, to get it all done mm. on Saturday. So kind of swift, sharp kind of move. Yeah. yeah, I suppose, Sandra, that's the big thing. We're looking ahead to, to Saturday and how it's all going to pan out and um, you know how, what the timeline of events is going to be. But of course, really, I mean, you know, and we, we uh, as, as, you know, journalists, uh, we're waiting, we're planning as well our day and how we're going to cover it all and, you know, what sort of coverage we'll have across RT News. But like really for the politicians themselves, there's obviously a few that probably know that they're going to get a job. But there are a few, many, I'm sure, that are thinking they might, they might not. And that must be really difficult to be facing into, mustn't it? You know? Yeah, it's an awkward time. Uh, and as Michal was mentioning, I mean, the big factor in this coalition government, we've had coalitions for a long time, is the fact of two kind of larger, we're call, well, we're calling them medium-sized parties, but two equally sized, medium-sized parties with a small party. That means lots of disappointment in the ranks. You look at Fianna Fáil, they haven't been in government for nine years. There's a lot of people who've never been ministers. They're all hoping for a promotion. You look at Fine Gael, there's people who've been waiting a long time for a promotion and haven't got it and they're also waiting. And of course, people are going to be, have to be moved from cabinet, from the existing cabinet. They're not going to be happy either. Not a great position to be in for the leaders of both Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael. They don't like disappointing people. And yes, of course, over time that can simmer. And that's a consideration for all the leaders because they need to mind their own position as well. So we'll be watching that over the next couple of days. I suppose at this stage, the conventional political wisdom for what it's worth is that the Green vote will get over the line. Nothing is 100% guarantee. Everyone's saying it's tight. In Fianna Fáil, I've been talking to people today. They're talking about figures of maybe 60 to 70%. Now, they only need 50%. So that is, on the one hand, it's a comfortable majority. But it also shows you a very large number of members could be against the deal. And that's for several reasons, I suppose. One, the historic rivalry. But also it's that question about the future of the Fianna Fáil party. Is it a bad idea, as some might think, to go back into some sort of arrangement with Fine Gael? Now, this is a proper coalition government as opposed to confidence and supply. Mm. But it didn't work out at the ballot box the last time round. So is it a gamble this time? 
However, equally in Fianna Fáil, the consideration might be that it's not a good time to go to the country if you look at the opinion polls where they've been in kind of the mid-teens. So that there's a lot of factors swimming mm. around there. But yes, tomorrow we're expecting the results to be coordinated, maybe around tea time, six or seven o'clock. That's what we're hoping for anyway. <laughs> exactly. We're hoping for that. We know from previous experience these things can drag out. If you're a real political nerd, there's going to be live streams on Facebook from Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael. Now, uh, a Fianna Fáil insider told me today that's going to be like watching paint dry. But if you want to watch the sorting of votes, it's going to be available to you. The Greens aren't doing that. Uh, but all three parties hopefully will coordinate their results in around a similar timetable. So possibly kind of early evening, I would say. It'd be fascinating to think, Mio, wouldn't it, that if, it, if the Fianna Fáil vote was around the 60%, um, you'd imagine then that there's a third of the membership, the, the voting membership then, who must be thinking, sure, look, we'll give it a go in another election. Because that, that's surely if you're voting no to this, that's what you're heading for. Yeah, or, or that fear, that real kind of visceral fear about identity and identity mm. uh, getting lost uh, in the midst of a new administration uh, and that they want to mark that. And, and they could also be positioning themselves to get, get behind someone else uh, within Fianna Fáil in the future. And I think that's why when, when it comes to allocating ministerial jobs, uh, there will be a focus on that. And there will be a focus because Fianna Fáil will have a read tomorrow evening on the mm. constituencies as to where who passed it and who didn't pass it. That's the way they're counting it. So that could be striking as well. Yeah. So does that mean then that, that the leadership would be looking closely then at the job? So like, although we're saying that there will be people who probably know that they're getting a certain job, there are those who are maybe teetering. Are you saying like that somebody like Michael Martin with the party leadership, I suppose, will be going, right, um, there's three guys, women here, who I think would be good for this job, but we'll have to see. Yeah. How yeah, the, yeah, I think, I think, goes. yeah, I think that that's kind of in a general election sense. Mm. If you can bring in the, your running mate, you stand a good chance of promotion. Now there's this added layer of responsibility placed on TDs and their own constituencies to deliver the yes vote. First time ever Fianna Fáil uh, TDs have faced that, and they have been ringing around, uh, and some of them have really struggled. Some of them kind of trying to talk to people in their constituency, so they wouldn't perhaps know very well it would be another TD in that constituency who would have lost their seat, and they are now having to try and get them on board. So it's proven it's proven difficult for 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 Fine Gael, It will be a different problem. As Sandra was saying, it's the it's the dropping of those huge numbers of ministers because um, so many people had had ministerial jobs in Fine Gael the last time. And I think when you see it in the convention centre, if it does go the way we think it might go, what you're going to see is so many people demoted. There's no other way of saying it. And to the, the scale of that, well, the, you can only compare it really perhaps back to 91 when Albert Reynolds, for strategic and different reasons, called so many ministers. It'll be different this this time because there will have been little choice facing Leo Varadkar. Uh, but that won't make the, the loss any easier yeah. for the, for those to bear, you know. And also then you're, you're, let's say you're giving up a department or you're, you know, yeah, you're losing a job, you're losing a department. You're handing it over to potentially somebody who is from a different party, but you're also having to support them because you're in government, you're in coalition with them so look tricky tricky but we'll be watching that all very closely that'll be a fascinating outcome on Saturday um, we've got to talk about somebody who definitely is losing a job will be keeping a very important job but um, Taoiseach Leo Varadkar um, is uh, having his final cabinet meeting today well his final cabinet meeting as Taoiseach he'll still be leader of Fine Gael um, but I suppose we've, we've got to talk about his, his tenure as um, Taoiseach uh, just about three years uh, as, as Taoiseach. Um, if you were to say, I suppose, one sentence about him as Taoiseach, what would you say, Michal? Well, did well on Brexit, but was appointed by his colleagues at the time to deliver electoral success and was seen as the one who would guarantee that. This is a long sentence. But <laughs> uh, on that basis, and it's on that, mm. the many of his colleagues would judge him. Uh, mm. he, he didn't deliver. Mm. And I think that's the painful thing for him mm. and the thing that would be there in his mind. And from what I gather from those around him, he, he does intend to stay on and try at some point in the future, whether it goes the four or five years or not, to put himself forward again to seek to be returned as Taoiseach because that's what he had offered uh, and that he didn't deliver on that. I mean, they won 50 seats in 2016, mm. 35 this time. Mm. Sandra, um, I suppose... He, he 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 might have done good, I suppose, on the the international stage. There, as me also just said, you know, with with Brexit, um, but and he did mention before actually that he needed to focus now uh, on being leader of Fine Gael. But of course, uh, as things stand, he'll only have a couple of years to do that before he's Taoiseach again. If this, um, you know, if he picks up uh, the Taoiseach's role again in two years' time, when Mihal steps aside to let him do that. Um, so it's a funny kind of future for him in a way, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's going to be an odd balance. Mm. And it's a real step down from being Taoiseach to cabinet minister. I mean, cabinet minister is a very serious uh, and lofty role, but at the same time, you're not the Taoiseach. So it is, it is a big change. 
And it's also a gamble in terms of will he be Taoiseach again on December 15th, 2022, which is the date specified in the programme for government. No ambiguity there. But what it says is that the Fine Gael leader will take over. It's not, you know, Leo Varadkar. It's whoever's in, in charge of Fine Gael at the time. Now, at the moment, there's no sense that there's something brewing in Fine Gael, uh, that could lead to Leo Varadkar not being in charge in December 2022. But, you know, we always use the cliche, a week is a long time in politics. Well, this is predicting two and a half years away. Or, or maybe he will choose to do something else in the interim. That has been suggested as well. So anything is possible in that way. I think when you look back at his tenure, I, I would point also to what Michal was talking about, the lack of electoral success. I mean, that is the big thing you're supposed to do on the party mm. side when you're leading. If you look at his time in Taoiseach, I think he presided over some social change in terms of repealing the Eighth Amendment. But then you look back at other things in terms of how will his handling of the COVID crisis be judged? And it seems it's almost early yet to make definitive decisions. We are being cautioned not to be careful with these comparisons about the level of deaths, for example, in care homes versus abroad, that the, you know, the criteria aren't equal. But that could leave a kind of nasty sting in terms of the legacy. That That is something very serious that affected many mm. families. So that, there, I think there will be a look back and there may be inquiries in time as to how the, the government and the Taoiseach handled that. Yeah, and but I suppose as well, the other side of it will be the, um, you know, um, how sort of, uh, I suppose... The, the people listened to all of those different speeches that he gave throughout March and April and that, you know, Irish people sort of did what they were told and, and those very serious, um, you know, press conferences that he gave, not even press conferences, just statements, you know, people kind of followed what he said. Um, we were just saying as well now that kind of the hard work is done, isn't it? Because really, Michal Martin, if he is Taoiseach next week, hasn't really got a huge amount in terms of... Um, presents I suppose to be giving to the people because yeah. everything is more or less opening up now the country is opening up post lockdown Yeah Leo Varadkar is the one who, yeah. who opened up the country yeah. really uh, so then really Michal Martin's uh, main job it seems will, will be the, the money stuff the financial stuff mm -hmm. and perhaps hard decisions that, that will have to be made uh, around budget time and that, that begins that begins in August yeah. really Yeah that'll be soon um, so there will be a cabinet meeting and then we're go he's going to have uh, a final sort of speech uh, or a final press conference at government buildings this evening and will we be expecting more quotes from movies uh, will we be expecting a motion do you think from Leo Varadkar knowing that it's his Last time it's the last goodbye, now. isn't it? And it is. I think there's going to be a thank you to the people for their help mm -hmm. and cooperation throughout the, the COVID nineteen crisis, uh, and then a uh, focus as well on what was decided today was the fa the face masks. And no great massive decision is going to be made on those air bridges easing restrictions essentially between EU countries for travel uh, and Ireland. So, and then. The other question the cabinet are, are dealing with is can the numbers attending mass and more places of worship, can they be go beyond 50? That that mightn't happen. Uh, there mightn't be uh, progress made on that despite some ministers really pushing it, I think, as we speak. So it could be the Fianna Fáil leader then who gets to give that good news to people who'll be hoping, I'm sure, to, to hear that news. The has compared to him a to a priest, of course, so that would be fitting. <laughs> Leo compared Michal to? To a priest. Oh, right. yeah. When was that? Along the way. Along, along the way. way. <laughs> before this. <laughs> before yeah. this friendly mm. term. Mm. Um, so look, um, Saturday then we know is, is going to be a busy enough day. Uh, there's going to be lots of stuff happening down at the convention centre, which is the kind of other doll for the day, um, starting off there in the morning. Um, we are presuming at this point, Sandra, that the votes are going to go ahead. All indications, like you said, look as though they will. So then on Saturday morning, uh, the doll will be sitting as a full doll because all TDs will be there because they have to have a full session in order to vote in a new Taoiseach, don't they? Yes, that's right. So the first full sitting of all 160 TDs in several months. So they've got the space in the convention centre to space them all out. Uh, I'm told they've got the bell. The bell's going to sound the same. <laughs> the audio visual system is all set up. We've seen pictures of the inside, all the kind of leather seats with the, you know, the harp on the back. It looks really impressive, it has to be said. And a lot of work has gone into it. So yes, we'll have the, the sitting, the speeches on the nominations for Taoiseach, the vote, then a break uh, when the Taoiseach goes to the Oris to receive his seal of office. Then back to government buildings, the party leaders will be uh, telling their own people in the three parties who got the ministerial jobs. Um, and then the cabinet, we understand, will take the bus, as has been the, the tradition in the last few years. Uh, they'll take the bus back down to the convention centre and then kind of sit, well, they two won't sit in a row. Uh, yes. In the bus, though, two metres apart, all wearing face masks. Yeah, at that uh, point. yeah presumably, <laughs> yeah. actually. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. So there's lots of different considerations this time yeah. that make it a little different. But uh, it tends to be a long day then in terms of by the time 
time they go back to the Dáil, they have to vote on the nominations for the ministers. Then the ministers go to the Auras. That could be quite late. I think the last time in 2017, it was, it was around 10 or 11 o'clock at night. And of course, we've got Michael D. Higgins in the Auras, who is an older person who is really still should be very much socially distancing, you know, close to cocooning, I suppose, because of his age. So there's all of those kind of considerations. Logistically, it sounds like a bit of a nightmare, Michal. Yeah, it does, uh, I suppose. But I mean, that won't diminish the fact no. if, you, if a Taoiseach is elected and it will be a, a unique setting for mm. for them. And then let's not forget the Shannon here. Let's not forget her. Let's they not will forget be meeting now. the convention centre on Monday as well. And the yes. Shannon uh, um, getting the strange relevance, uh, which, which it typically wouldn't have on the day that the Taoiseach is elected because the 11 nominees will have to be announced to, so business can, can pass. That's in the right, Shannon. which is going to be quite strange, really, because that then will coincide with a High Court decision that we were maybe expecting uh, yesterday or even today. But the the High Court has now said we will not make that decision until Monday at the earliest. And that's about uh, this um, uh, argument, I suppose, that this group of 10 senators are making that the do- that the Shannon should have been sitting even without the 11 uh, nominees. Yeah. So it'll all kind of coincide together. But I suppose if there is a decision made on that one way or the other, it's something that will work in the future if this yeah, comes it up again. Yeah, it would be a key thing in the future. Yeah. It would take away that particular deadline uh, for any for any future government formation process. Mm-hmm. Uh, if it had, if the judgment had come in today or tomorrow, it would have really taken the, the sense of crisis uh, out of what could happen if the Greens were to reject this. Mm. Um, finally then, the last few minutes, the last Your Politics podcast, I suppose, before we hear everything. So I'll put you on the spot now and ask you about who do you think is going to get jobs maybe. Um who do you think is going to get, uh, let's see, uh, justice? <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> Sandra? I, I don't think Jim O'Callaghan. Do you not? No. Okay. Sandra? I, yeah, I mean, Jim O'Callaghan is a name, of course, that who has been mentioned. Mm. He's an obvious person, senior counsel, mm-hmm. Fianna Fáil spokesperson on justice. His name has been mentioned for the Attorney General as well. That would be a sort of... A, different position because it's been a long time since we've seen an elected person in the Attorney General role. Mm. Some people I've spoken to said they didn't think that was a runner for the moment. How do you go into the doll and do the AG job at the same time? But his name certainly has been circulating. Mm. Uh, so yeah, lots, lots of possibilities. I suppose we think there's some certainties. Finance and public expenditure. Finance, Pascal Dunhu to stay on mm. there. Uh, Michael McGrath in public expenditure. They, they they seem to be bankers. And certainly like w- without, I suppose, without then the, the specific departments, but people like Dara Kaliri, Simon Dara Coveney, Coveney Simon Co- uh, we're still expecting yeah. those. And then obviously there'll be Eamon Ryan and Catherine Martin. Uh, yeah. And then one other from one the other Greens. One other Greens, either Malcolm Noonan or Brian Ledden, I would think, would be in the shake up there for that. If you're going for a non-Dublin yeah. seat, yeah. people like Barry Cowan, you, you'd expect, uh, mm-hmm. will be in Cabinet. Will Simon Harris Probably most likely at this stage, Heather Humphreys, yes. Mm-hmm. And then is it Helen McEntee or Josepha Madigan uh, f- for the other seat? So and not, Ra- Rabbit will will be in cabinet. It, yeah. it's, it's so expected. No, not as well. not huge changes then. It's because I suppose in a way, although we said it's difficult for them and there will be disappointments. These names are, you know, these are the people that we've seen in and out of the government for negotiation talks. Yeah, yeah but in fairness, out of 15 well. ministers, you're yeah. looking at probably 10 or 11 new people, I would think. Mm. So, uh, you know, that there is, it's going to be a, a lot of change. And I think for me, Hall Martin and for the, you know, as Taoiseach and for the other party leaders, they're going to be mindful of that because it needs to look different. They can't have all the same people who were there the last time. You know, there's a sense that it needs to present a different face essentially to the electorate, to the country. This is supposed to be a new administration. So there's also onus on those party leaders to kind of promote people who haven't been in cabinet before. And that's important. Mm-hmm. Um, well, look, like I say, it's it's all to happen in the next sort of 72 hours and so. And uh, thunder and lightning this evening, uh, a, a nonstop rain apparently is on the forecast for all day Saturday. So there's nothing better to do than sit inside, listen and watch to all the coverage that will be across uh, all of uh, RTE News channels, radio and all that all day Saturday it's going to be very exciting but for now thank you very much for joining to the Your Politics podcast if you enjoyed it please subscribe leave a review and you can join us again uh, from me Maggie Doyle Micheál Lehan and Sandra Hurley thank you for listening <laughs>